All right, I'm up on the roof now of my uh, North Star Laredo truck camper. Showing you the arrangement that I have right now. I've got two 120 watt polycrystalline panels. As you can tell, they're uh, light blue or a dark blue, which indicates that they're polycrystalline. Monocrystalline panels are black. So that's your dead giveaway there that that's what I'm using. Uh, these are perfectly fine to use. Um, yeah, monocrystalline panels are have a higher efficiency, but panels are rated by what they can produce. So a 120 watt panel will always produce 120 watts under ideal conditions, whether it's a monocrystalline or a polycrystalline. So that breaks a myth right there that um, that they're just better overall, the monocrystalline panels. Um, just depends on what they're rated and what you need. And, and monocrystalline panels are typically smaller, a little bit smaller, but uh, that's the trade-off you get. So as you can see, the arrangement I have right now, I've got two. Um, I've got room up here for three, but I didn't want to put another one right here because it would be, leave me with very little room to step around and perform maintenance. I still might change my mind, but for now, I think I'm pretty happy with what I have, having that 100 watt uh, pop portable panel on these two uh, rooftop panels. It gives me 340 watts total, so I'm pretty happy with uh, with that arrangement. But I just wanted to show everybody um, my arrangement and how my panels are are uh, arranged here on the roof. As you can see, the um, no additional holes were were drilled for the actual wiring. The refrigerator flue is used to pass the wires, um, which works, I think, uh, better than drilling another hole for your, um, you know, your 10 gauge wire to go down to your charge controller. So um, this works good for me, and I'm sure it'll work well for you if uh, you're looking at something similar. So this is it for the rooftop. So here's the. Uh the charge controller, it's a PWM charge controller made by Zamp Solar. I wrote a review on this uh, a few months ago. Very nice controller for a PWM. It's got five level battery charging. As you can see here, um, the current voltage state is uh, 12.3. Um, by the indicator lights here, you can tell that it's um, daylight and it's charging. Um, this is a charge indicator. And this is the current state of my batteries. Uh, last few days have been overcast. I've been on solar power only and been running a fan and my um, my DC compressor refrigerator. So as you can see, the voltage state is uh, kind of low. It's usually not this low, um, especially when the sun is out in full force with no clouds. It's um, um, slightly overcast right now, kind of very hazy, um, about 75 degrees right now. We're in... Um, mid-February and um, as you could see um, this is um, not optimum you know I, I don't like to see, uh, see my my voltage drop below 12.2 that's about as low as I'd like to go um, so I've turned off the fan and I'm just running the refrigerator right now and um, just doing a full charge I've got my portable solar panel deployed as well I'll show you that in a few minutes but um, I wanted to start here with the main controller for the rooftop uh, panels. Um, by pushing this button, you can see what I'm drawing right now. Um, it's about 12 o'clock in the afternoon right now, and uh, the two panels on the roof are only producing 5.6 amps. That's because it's hazy, and um, normally this is, you know, like in 10, 11, 12 range. So. Um, the hazy conditions here in the middle of winter are producing a fairly uh, low voltage. It's rising a little bit as you can see as the sun kind of comes out a little bit. So this is the amperage that the panels are producing. If you press this button again here, the amp bolt button, this will tell you how many amp hours have been harvested, harvested thus far this day. As you can see, not very many um, because of the hazy conditions. We'll go back to the, uh, the base uh, base reading here. So this is just tells you that charging is uh, taking place. And um, so with the conditions they are, um, I've elected to deploy my portable panel. I normally don't do that, but um, sometimes in the winter and if it's hazy, I'll need to deploy it to, uh, to get the extra, um, 
the charge that I need to get my batteries um, going in a higher state. So let's uh, move on to the next item here, which will be the uh, uh, the portable uh, panel. I'll show that to you, and then I'll show you the batteries, how I have them wired up. So this is the, uh, the solar power charge port that I um, installed about eight months ago. I wrote a review on this uh, very recently on the website, Truck Camper Adventure. Um, as you can see right now, I've got the portable panel plugged in. Here's the uh, the wiring that runs to the panel. It's the back of the panel right here. Let me show you the front. So that's the, uh, the setup right now. It's a monocrystalline panel, 100 watt. Uh, produces about 5.8 um, amps in ideal conditions. And I'll show you the charge controller here in a few minutes, what, uh, what readings we're getting to uh, complement the, uh, the rooftop panel arrangement that's going on right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. The sun's coming out more and more. It's been pretty hazy today. So as you could see right now, um, this uh, portable panel is producing 14.3, 14.4 volts um, and 5.5 amps. So it's pretty good. This is uh, very complimentary. You can do this, um, run a portable system like this in parallel with your rooftop panels to get even more charging. The, the great thing about a portable panel, of course, is that you can aim it toward the sun and uh, um, tilt it toward the sun to optimize uh, output, unlike the rooftop panels, which are flat. So the angle might not be conducive to um, good charging at times if you're using just a rooftop system. So uh, this complements well with what I have, which is really nice. Um, so let's go ahead and go in and I'll show you the batteries. All right. This is the battery compartment of my uh, North Star Laredo truck camper. As you can see, the uh, compartment is located indoors, um, which means you have to use AGM batteries uh, since they don't outgas during uh, charging conditions. Um, these are Lifeline batteries. Uh, they're golf cart batteries, 6 volt, wired in series to produce one large um, in essence what you're doing is producing one large 12 volt battery uh, 220 amp hours uh, makes a pretty beefy battery bank um, um, and it's wired in series as you can see from the uh, the wiring configuration um, looks like a rat's nest of wires in there but I can assure you that uh, yeah, it all makes sense um, there's basically four components that are wired to these batteries um, one the inverter it's a, a Go Power 600 watt inverter, and this is the um, the fuse that goes with it to protect the inverter from shorts. So this is obviously wired to the batteries. Um, they're located in proximity to each other to eliminate line loss. Um, the other wires, um, two go to the solar power system, um, the uh, charge port that I showed you earlier, to the portable panel. And the other one goes to the rooftop system, and the other set of wires goes to the uh, the, the converter charger um, fuse panel for the main uh, the main electrical system of the rig. Um, been very happy with the Lifeline batteries. Um, I've had them in two rigs. I've had I've owned Lifeline batteries now for like seven years, and I've been very happy with them. The performance is uh, is it can't be beat. I've been very pleased with them. I've used them in all kinds of environments. Triple digit heat here in Arizona to freezing temperatures in the mountains of uh, Utah and South Dakota. So um, they just perform well. As long as you take care of them, charge them properly, and periodically equalize them, um, they'll last you a good 10 years. Um, that's pretty common with uh, owners who um, use these batteries and properly care for them. Don't go cheap on your batteries, guys. Um, if you're building your system, um, batteries are an essential component. Basically, all that energy that's being produced by your solar power system 
um, has to be uh, captured somewhere and that's what the batteries do so don't go cheap on your batteries guys don't buy used ones um, get fresh batteries for your rig that way you know that they've been properly cared for so um, that's basically it guys for the um, for my solar power system I hope you enjoyed the tour if you have any questions you can contact me on truckcamperadventure.com in the uh, contact me section just uh, click on the link and I'll answer your email and of course you can um, leave your comments here in the video so hope you enjoyed the tour that's basically it Mellow Mike out